Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mind Pump. In the first half of the show, we talk about how to make your bones stronger, living to age 100, the effect that sodium has on your insulin levels, as well as other topics. In the second half of the show, the guys coach four live callers on questions such as, my back hurts when I shoulder press. How can I fix that? What are the best healthy fats to eat for gaining muscle mass? My low calorie diet is making me sick and tired. What should I do? And how can I modify the MAPS programs and still keep them MAPS programs? Finally, if you haven't yet subscribed to our other channel, Mind Pump Clips, go over there and subscribe. You will not regret it. All right, enjoy the show. Nothing builds bones stronger than lifting weights. In fact, as you get older, one of the leading causes of death and injury is weak bones. And uh, studies have proven that strength training strengthens bones consistently. No other form of exercise has been proven to do this at nearly the same rate. Uh, I'm saying this because of that post. Of that. Yeah, I was just going to say shout out to Squat University with the uh, the cool post with the 70-year-old guy. How okay, old? so yeah. check this out. It's a video of a 70, I think he's 70-something years old. 72, I think is what yeah, he was. Yeah, 72 years mm -hmm. old. And Squatting 450. 450. So he's a power lifter. Okay? Yeah, yeah. He started lifting weights at 50. Yeah. So it's not like he's been doing this his whole life. Which is awesome. Yeah, that, that's a great part of the story. He went to get a bone density test. Now, bone weakness is super common in men and women as they get older. Your bones just get weaker, just like your muscles do. Well, anyway, this guy went to get bone density tests. Let's see what, what's going on here. A, a bone density score of 2.0 to 2.2 uh, is better than 95% of men over the age of 60. Okay. Yeah. His score was 5.2. 5. Yeah, 5.2. 5. 5. More, more, more than double the most elite people in his age group. Five standard deviations above what would be considered amazing yeah. for his age. Uh, for someone over 60, he's over 70. Legit. Now, this is this is a big deal because I remember training, um, you know, at one point I trained a lot of doctors and surgeons and, and a few of the surgeons I worked with because of the type of medicine they practiced, a good chunk of the of their uh, patients were people over the age of 70. So they had a lot of people over the age of vascular surgeons, right? A lot of people over the age of 70. And I would ask them like, what are the, you know, leading causes of death and whatever of course the top ones like heart disease, cancer. And they said, you know, what's crazy. He goes, uh, you should look this up. Falling. Falling mm -hmm. is a big deal. And I looked it up myself, falling one out of every four people. So so any people over the age of 65, on average, one out of every four of them falls every year. In other words, your chances of falling once a year are 25% wow. after the age of 65. And, and the comment that they said, that I'll never forget this. One of them told me this. He says, this is common in medicine that you fall down, you break your hip, you die of pneumonia. I was just going to bring it, yeah, bring the hip up. I wonder, so what is that uh, statistic in terms of somebody breaking their hip uh, in terms of their life expectancy after that? It's it's not even just the hip, although the hip is, uh, obviously, if you break that, you're quite well, immobile. Because, yeah, you're just pretty much sedentary and you it's a rapid decline. Well, it, uh, loss of balance as you get older, yes, balance has to do with uh, the inner ear and your equilibrium, but a large part of the reason why you lose your balance to get older is you're weak. Mm -hmm. You lose strength. Yeah. So you lose mobility and strength. And you can see this when you, you know, I've trained a lot of older people and I saw their balance improve dramatically just from getting them stronger in the gym. Like you trip over something, be able to catch yourself. Uh, if you're not that strong, I mean, you're going down. And then on top of it, when your muscles are weak, you can get, you can bet your bones are weak because they're very closely connected. So anything that strengthens muscles, strengthens bones. And if you fall and you break something, now you're immobile and you see their health decline very rapidly. And that's what happens. Anybody who's immobile for, for a certain period of time, you'll see a health decline. But the older you get, the, the faster that decline tends to happen. So I remember I had a client. I've told you guys this. Uh, I haven't talked about this in a long time. I had a one woman that I trained who um, I trained her. She was in her 80s. And, you know, I trained her for about, I want to say maybe four or five years. And I could tell that she was kind of, you know, maybe some early signs of dementia. Like she would tell me the same stories here and there, ask me some, you know, some questions, but it was kind of imperceptible. It was kind of like, okay, well, let's, you know, whatever. Well, anyway, she fell in her bathtub, got hurt. She had to have physical therapy and a nurse and her daughter's like, I can't afford to pay for exercise. So she's just going to be taken care of by this nurse or whatever. <clears throat> well, anyway, it's like eight months later, I'm at the grocery store. And I see this woman that I used to train. And first of all, she's way hunched over on a walker. So her posture just went terrible. 
She didn't even recognize me. It's a woman I worked out with for four years. Wow. She looked at me and I said, hey, how you been or whatever? And she's like, who are you? The decline in her health was so fast yeah. because she stopped exercising. And that's what happens as you get older. It's like you're, 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 you're fighting aging uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a hard fight. And if you stop, boy, does your body decline very quickly. Do you think it has less to do with aging and then the body just adapting to the fact that it's getting no stress in that direction for so many months, so many years, so many Starts decades. Starts pruning its way down. To yeah, I, I think I think what really this this example, this guy who doesn't start till he's 50 something years old, what that highlights is it is less to do with age and more to do with if you stop sending that stress signal to the body, then the muscles, the bones are not right. going to adapt to support because it doesn't need to. It yes. starts pruning. It starts getting weaker. It starts prioritizing energy and focus and strength in other aspects of the body. But we, when we talk about it, we always talk about it like age. Oh, when you get older. We blame it all on age. Yeah, people yeah. think that yeah. it, like when you get older, you're going to have weak bones. And it's like, no, not necessarily. If you continue to stress them for the your entire life, like hopefully you have a situation like this guy where you're five times the, the most elite in his class. And doesn't this also slap in the face the notion that you should start avoiding these compound lifts? Oh, like no. That, well, that was my, know. so that was my post. I don't yeah. know if you saw that. Like that uh -uh. was, so when you guys shared that clip, um, cause I've recently, I've been annoyed with the, the amount of, you know, posts that I've been tagged in of people that are countering, uh, what we talk about here. Obviously we promote, uh, that people squat and deadlift and overhead press. If you can't do those things that you work towards them, we think it's incredible for building muscle, incredible for building bone density, incredible for overall health, incredible for burning fat. Those lifts are so essential to, to having tons of success. And I say essential because I believe in it like that, yeah. where a lot of people in the space do not. They try and they convince the people that, oh, you don't need to do those things, do these other movements. And I just, I'm so tired of that movement in our space because I felt like we just came from that. I, the early years, I know. The, my first five to 10 years of being a trainer in my early 20s, that that's where we were. We were in the the leg press, leg extension, yeah. you know, Everything machine based. Yeah, Smith machine and shoulder pressing on and like we just came from that era and I think that we had lost our way a bit from some of these old lifts that were so valuable well, to look, us. Well, look, you have to yeah. Okay, so the reason why the bones get stronger is because of the sheer it's called sheer force on the bones. Mm -hmm. Um and the muscles anchor at the bones, right? So that's where they're getting stronger. Find me machine exercises cuz one of the most important <clears throat> bone structures that you need to maintain strengthen is your spine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your spine is very important. In fact, as people get older, when they're not maintaining strength and health, you notice that their spine curvature starts to change. In extreme cases, you get a humpback, you get really bad posture. It's hard to correct after a certain point. Tell me non-free weight exercises that, that strengthen and stress the spine. So you're doing a leg press, you're doing a machine shoulder press, you're doing a machine press, you're doing a machine row. Yes, you're still strengthening the bones and all that stuff, but now tell me an exercise that's going to create load on the spine like a standing overhead press or a squat or a deadlift, yeah. right? So those exercises load the entire body and create the, you know, um, the Unfortunately, I don't have a study to reference or I can't prove that if this guy would have not have been heavy squatting from 50 to what 70 years old and he did leg presses and leg extensions instead, hmm. where would that test be? But I can guarantee you it, it, it wouldn't be as high. It would not be nowhere, nowhere near No way. High. I would bet that a hundred percent. Uh it makes a it makes a um a huge difference on the strength of your bones and your muscles. They're also fundamental human movements. And one thing that we take for granted is that that we can move a particular way and we assume that we'll always be able to move a particular way. But if you stop moving a particular way, your body forgets it. Mm -hmm. Even walking. If you were bedridden for two years, you would find walking to be challenging. Even if you're in your 20s, once you got up out of that bed, your body literally will forget almost, uh, for lack of a better term, how to walk. Well, if you don't squat, your body will forget how to squat. If you don't press overhead, your body can forget how to do that. If you don't deadlift and, and think about those movements in everyday life, right? You need those in everyday life. So, okay, you're strong in the gym, but are you really strong in real life? What's the carryover? And how many exercises do you need to piece together to try to equal <clears throat> the benefits of, of some of those exercises? It well, really I, I think wild. we also dramatically undervalue 
the learning curve of those movements and how valuable that is. You're right. Mm -hmm. When you see these studies that these Instagram turds use to <laughs> prove that their the hack squat or their leg press is equivalent to what a squat is based off of, you know, an Muscle, EMG yeah. or some bullshit six week study, it's like what you're not taking into account was the all the the benefits that you get from learning something difficult, which is so funny because we know this in life. We talk about this all the time. Yeah, like we just talked about this on the show not that long ago about anything worth doing is difficult. Mm -hmm. So the idea that that wouldn't apply to health and fitness, you're stupid. Like it's the same. Th it's the same concept that the fact that this squat is difficult to get at it that you're going to have to work towards it for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. you, it's it's hard to measure that and say, oh well, how much more value does that bring? To me, than just being able to get in a machine and do it right and away. You know what's crazy is not just a, a, a muscular uh, thing to to identify, right? Like right. musculoskeletal, like all these other systems of the body benefit from that kind of load demand uh, on your spine. Yeah, and it's fun. It's this is the the crazy part is if you look at the studies on exercise and bone density. Now, generally, being healthy helps with bone density. Okay, <clears throat> but if you look at the studies on other forms of exercise and bone density. The effect is small. It's actually small. Like running and walking. Running and walking will have a positive effect on the bone density of your lower extremities from the impact of walking and running. But the, the bone density improvements in comparison to strength training are small. In fact, here's how you know what kind of effects your form of exercise has on your bones, how much muscle it builds. It's a, there's a direct relationship between the amount of muscle that your form of exercise builds and the amount of bone density that it it, uh, it improves upon with you. And strength training just crushes all of them. In fact, with runners, older runners, they find a little bit of an improvement in bone density in the lower body, and they see bone density losses in the upper body because they didn't do anything for the upper body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So very, very interesting. In fact, osteopenia, which is before osteoporosis and osteoporosis, is now showing up in people in their 30s. That's crazy. Wow. In their 30s because of the inactivity. And the beauty of strength training is to reap the benefits of it, the muscle building and bone strengthening effects. One or two days a week will give you a lot. Literally, one or two days a week is enough to have positive effects on that, on those types of things. Because strength training is about the adaptations. Other forms of exercise really to get, you'll get some benefit always, but it's usually like, okay, and really get the benefits, you got to do a lot of it. Strength training one or two days a week, and you'll see positive effects. Remember, I told you I had a client who uh, was had osteopenia, and uh, they were doing everything with her, her doctors. They had her on Fosamax, which is like a, it's a drug that you use and other things. And um, she started strength training with me, and for the first time in a decade, I think it was, they saw a reversal in her bone density to the point where her doctor called me, got on the phone with me. He's like, what are you doing with her? And I'm like, <laughs> uh, you know squatting. We're doing some lunges. We're doing some push-ups. I mean, she was older. He's like, that's it. I said, that's all I'm doing. And they turned her into a case study that they actually use as an example for their other patients. And it was literally, I trained her once to twice a week. It wasn't like anything hardcore. Yeah. I saw that effect. I remember. Yeah. So my grandma's husband at the time, he, he was, uh, he he would have a hard time just getting up and out of his chair. And like his doctors were telling him he had like, like signs of osteopenia and he was trying to ask me about like supplements and like calcium and like all yeah. that. Like, like you literally need to strength train. Like like you're weak. Like that's what like you need to focus on. And it was just really hard for him to understand that fact. It's like that's what's going to move the needle for you the most. Like this, you know, being able to consume some kind of supplement for this is, is going to is not even going to impact what's. Going Though on. that was my point of bringing that up. That we have this idea. Most people think that you know osteoporosis is because you get older. And you lack like nutrients and it just, it's yeah. an age thing and a lacking nutrients thing versus the, like your body just adapting to it. The bones not being stressed. Yeah. Whereas if you know, forget, I mean, not that you should forget, but the, the value of the, the, the nutrient part is, is it pales in comparison to the benefits that you get from strength training and have, stressing yeah. the bones that way. You have to have severe nutrient deficiencies to notice bone loss. Right. If you're strength training. Strength training sends a signal. It's like adding calories to build muscle, but you're not lifting weights. Right, exactly. You just end up getting fat. Exactly. All right, everybody. Here's the giveaway for today's episode, MAPS Anabolic, the program that started it all. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. Do all of those things. If we like your comment and pick you as the winner, we'll notify you in the comment section. And boom, free access to MAPS Anabolic. We also have a sale going on this month. Check this out. 
MAPS Anywhere, MAPS Suspension, MAPS Prime, and the No BS Six Pack Formula all together in an at home holiday bundle. The price $99.99. That's less than the price of a single program. So $99.99 gets you all of those programs. To get started, just click on the link at the top of the description below to get yourself set up. All right, here comes the show. You know, um, speaking of lifting really heavy weights, I see uh, see the deadlift bar all, st stacked up. Listen, dude, listen <laughs> I got to say something. You, you're on cool. like a PR uh, kick here. Dude, these days, huh? I hit a lifetime PR. Wow. You did? Speaking of, that was my, I, I did 605. You did? 605 this morning. Oh, I didn't you know see that. that video? I've never, oh, I, yeah. I sent no, to the group. No. You don't yeah. watch my videos? I, I was actually bringing up, <laughs> I, just, yeah, I stopped I was, watching. I was posted on the my pub for you Instagram. Bit, uh, <laughs> I, I, I actually, uh, I didn't look at it. I actually, it's in the YouTube. I, I was referring to, to I, oh, that group. I was referring to your last one that you just 585, did. 585, right? Yeah, yeah. Four. So when you I did, did 605, huh? 605 today. Yeah. Wow. 600 was my previous PR. Strapless? He was too? like, yeah, if the no. baby's not cut. No straps? No. PR. Wow. No, no strap. I did have to use an alternate grip. Oh, yeah, that's, but that's now, fair. Now, I'm not going to say this is all of the reason, but it is kind of weird that I used the peak power from Organifi <laughs> both times. That's all I'm going to say, dude. Such sales. sales. <laughs> both, sales hey, both times. I did it when I hit 585. Yeah, yeah. And I did it. <laughs> powder no, that I formulated. No, no all joking aside, I, that's the that feels the best. I've never felt. That, it feels so good. Uh, and I don't have to take as much. How many scoops are you doing? I go down to two. 200 milligrams of caffeine. Normally, I'd go up to 300. Yeah. yeah. But I went down to 200, and I felt great. So I tried three the other day. It was nice. Right? Yeah, it was a nice feeling. And it, it lasted a long time, actually. Yes. I was like, surprised yeah. how long it lasted. So yeah. it was pretty cool. No, I, I the, the you know what it came from? The PR was mostly from, all joking aside, I cut my volume down. I know everybody. Uh, yeah, the guys who tell everybody don't overtrain. <laughs> I was probably overtrained. I focused on getting eight to nine hours of sleep instead of seven to eight. So I tried to prioritize sleep a little bit. And then I bumped my calories and then boom, just like magic, you know? Wow. I know. How did it feel coming up? I mean, you can watch the video. I got a little shaking in the legs, which I hate, but uh, well, it came bar, up smooth. The bar stayed level and everything? Though? Yeah, I probably could have done. Uh, I, bet you I feel like I could have got, I feel like if I wanted to like really push it, I could have gone 615. But uh, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to hurt myself. But yeah, it came up pretty good. I couldn't do a double overhand grip. I didn't even try it. I went with alternate. But yeah, it felt pretty good. And uh, you know, speaking of uh, speaking of aging. Oh yeah, dude. You see that? Oh yeah, that was a good little, time. Little shaky leg there. A little that's, bit. Yeah, little that's bit. good though. The um, speaking of aging, um, age does play a role. I want to say that before people are like, Ugh, Adam says aging doesn't play a role. Yeah, okay, <sighs> it does play a role, but it's not the role. Uh, that people make it out to be now. Yes. At well, a certain age. Well, it it plays it, yeah, but okay. It does. But for what reason does it play a role? It plays a role because it's less about the actual number and it's that, Oh, it's been 20 years since you touched the weight. Well, that's, that's, the, that's what I was going to yeah. say. The majority of what people notice is that yeah. age does play a role, especially once you get past 75, then it starts to play a larger role. But look, I'll remind people that powerlifting records are often set in people, in men in their mid 30s to mid 40s, well beyond what's supposed to be your peak, right? Yeah. Uh, Jack Elaine set world records in his 50s at 70 something years old. I think for his 70th birthday, he swam uh, handcuffed, legs shackled, and pulled. I think it was like seven tugboats, seven little seven rowboats, rowboats with yeah. ten people yeah. in each I said one. Tugboats last time you guys I got know. There. <laughs> <laughs> you got that buried in my head. Uh, you know, I mean, so, and this guy you just gave, we just shared the example from Squat University. The guys will definitely share the clip, yeah. uh, from there. That you know, who didn't even start till he's fifty something years old, and now he's, he's squatting more than I could squat yeah. in my at D my Doug prime. Hit P Doug hit his PRs uh, fifty. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, 48 or 9. 48, 49. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So almost 50, Doug hit PRs and he'd work it out his whole life. Yeah. And it was because he had good training, uh, programming, and, you know, finally, and, you know, diet and all that stuff. So, yeah, that was without peak performance. Huh? Imagine was, if you had peak yeah. performance. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Well, you might I may have to go do it again, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want people to be like, I'm going to do this. And then pull. I don't know, man. Coincidence? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. Yeah. Anyway, uh, did you? So, Justin, you and I had the same notes for this. And I, uh, I, I brought it, I, yeah. I wrote it down for you. Because I knew you'd love this. Uh -huh. Did you see what? Okay, so Adam doesn't know this. Do you see yeah. scientists what they did? What? They took chicken embryos and they yeah. genetically modified them to give them dinosaur, dinosaur legs. legs. 
Like Jurassic Park kind of shit. Like Come in on, real show life. Me a picture. Show me a picture. No, well, I'll, gotta, I'll send the link to Yeah, that. no. It's okay, wait, embryos. Wait, wait. So Is this like Jurassic Park? They never they, actually hatched How do we do this? Do you get the DNA out of a mosquito that was trapped in sap for <laughs> 10 million years? That how sounds, do we do this? That sounds, that's in the movies. Okay? Yeah. Is that, how do we do this? No, I don't know. How, how that's a good question. I don't know how they how got you, How do we get life? dinosaur legs? I don't know. I don't know how the they got DNA the DNA. dinosaur legs, Steve. I mean, what are they trying to do? I have no idea. I mean, they were trying to bring back uh, woolly mammoths, yeah, yeah, uh, to to graze on all of the uh, what that the tundra. What do they call that? Where it's like uh, all the permafrost. Ice, permafrost. You Thank know you what Doug. though? Did you guys see that giant turtle? You're talking about dinosaurs. That shit looked like a dinosaur. Oh my god! That turtle that I so sent who over. Was that? Is that your friend that sent that? No, no, no. I just was somebody on Facebook shared it, and then I fact checked it to make sure it was real, and it was a it's a it's a real photo. The oldest land. Animal, I think right now is a 100. I want to say 86 year old turtle. Tortoise, right? Tortoise, yeah. yeah. 186. Old, years older old. than shark? Sharks that are out land there? animal. Oh, land animal. Yeah, you said yeah. sorry. Land sharks don't exist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just in cartoons. Yeah, <laughs> ah, yeah they do. Sharks. They sell you loans, right? <laughs> <laughs> but 186. So, what, so shark though yeah. is the oldest animal that we found, right? Uh, or jellyfish? Oh, it was. That was the one shark, right? That they found. The 500 like, years old or something. Like that. Was, he was he was alive when. <laughs> When America got founded. Yeah. You know, imagine that? That's crazy. What that you is, got, Doug? Well, I'm just wondering how they know how old these things are. You count the rings. Oh, you do? You cut them in, <laughs> no. cut them in half and no. then you count the rings? Yeah, well, I mean, question. I'm you know, I'm suspect of all of it. Remember what I remember when we got into the big old thing about carbon dating and stuff like that? And then Graham Hancock, I watch his uh -huh. stuff. Like, I don't believe none of that shit no more, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so it only confirmed my bias, dude. Yeah. Remember we got into that conversation yeah, and you're giving well, me a hard time? Like, dude, what do you mean? Came, I'm like, yeah, but then you see stuff like- Well, I mean, there's just so many examples of, of how it goes way further back than uh, our original timeline and, and nobody's accounted for that. Or they're, they're just going to be like, well, that's weird. Yeah. yeah, Like, is that what we're left with, uh, with academia? Yeah. Do you know, you want to know what's crazy is that in some of these countries where people are like, oh my God, so many people live- over the age of 100, like in Sardinia, it's this island off the coast of Italy. Yeah. There's a little bit of an issue there because a they lot of people lied. <laughs> yeah. Lie yeah. They lied I about their about age that. so they could get pension. Yeah. <laughs> so they, so they're, they're not like, they're not over 100, they're like 80 or 90 or whatever. Yeah. Isn't that funny? I've heard that. <laughs> Wasn't there like people do that lied about that for like getting out of the war, getting out of things too? Yeah. Like there, so there's, a, there's like a couple waves of people that. <laughs> The ages aren't real, dude. dude. That's so so. <laughs> we were crazy. at the so we were at the Warrior game uh, just two nights ago, and they were celebrating a a a, a lady. I forgot doc Doctor Jean. I want to say her name was 104 years old. Wow! At the Warrior game. Oh, awesome! Yeah, yeah. yeah how long? How old do you guys want to live to? Do you guys have a number? 100. Uh, you want to go 100? I do want to go 100. 100? At least 100. You know why? Because our oh, generation that's an easy at our, least minimum. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do want to go at least 100 because I think our generation is like really the the first to be health conscious early on. Mm -hmm. Our parents' generation mm -hmm. weren't health conscious like we were at, at our age. Yeah. No. no. And we were. Like, uh, we were already, as, as young teenage boys, already thinking about eating better. And we've learned in our 20s what we were doing nutritionally, strength training, things like that. I just think that we have an and science. It'd be interesting to see, like, a strong 100-year-old, you know? Right. That, that could still, like, look really able-bodied, uh, capable, independent, you know? Like, I, I, I could I could get down with that 100 years old. You guys want to hear something to make you feel hell old right now? Mm. We're closer to the year 2050 than we are to the year 1990. Yeah, that's that is what? Weird. That's messed up, huh? <laughs> <It's> just <laughs> fried my brain. Yeah, Does yeah. that make you feel old as hell? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 1990 doesn't seem like that long yeah, ago. Yeah. You, someone said, date wow. yourself. I saw, I shared a meme the day, like dating yourself uh, to the younger generation. Uh, how would you date yourself without telling them how old you are to a younger generation? And they, one of the memes said, the guy said like, video games used to only work on Channel 3. Channel 3. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I was like, oh, that was a good one. That yeah. is true. What is that, Doug? It's a 100-year-old lady who is uh, deadlifting and uh, powerlifting. Look how See? solid she looks. Look how wow. good she looks, dude. Wow. Look Man, how solid she's she 100? looks. 100? So I definitely want to live to 100, yeah. bro. Come on. Yeah, wow. her name's I mean, Edith Merway Trainer. Can you show me a little clip of her doing something? I was 91, and I started uh, actually lifting on a regular. Edith Merway is not only celebrating her 100th birthday, she's also celebrating her entry into the Guinness Book of World Records. I don't know, man. There's a lot of unhealthy stuff we did Dude. in our youth, bro. I don't know if we're going to make it. <laughs> 
There's got to gotta be them? only like a handful of examples of this right now. Is like imagine, you're, but you like know you what? said the you're, generation's coming up. Yeah, you're seeing more and more yeah. though. You're, I see, I see eighty year olds all the time that are like, can look you can good? You, uh, you know what? I, yeah. Do you guys look forward to getting older, or do you guys look at it and go, yeah, oh, I don't want to do it? No, no I, yeah. so I do I. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I feel like the older you get, the more. Well, I don't feel like this is true. The more you get away with anything. Yeah. Like you can say <laughs> the more creepy part of that's get. wisdom though. No, not creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Although that's true too. Part of it's wisdom. You can't get away with You know that what you can and can't stuff. do. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You've learned that. No, already. man. My grandfather, man, he you know, before he passed away, he would just say shit. And I remember being like, oh, I was envious. Uh, like, yeah. he could just say what he wants. Yeah. Nobody's gonna say anything. He's 90 years old. Your fucks given is that way less. It's hard to say. You're, you're already, that's why I said I can't imagine you at 100. <laughs> yeah. Where's where are you gonna go with that, Adam? <laughs> that's gonna be crazy. Yeah, you know, I imagine I'll be the like the quiet hundred year old. I'm not saying this. I'm, I already said everything I need to say. I'll just kind of sit there and watch. Yeah, I, yeah. I feel like I could be that guy. I don't think I'm gonna be quiet at all. Hundred year old Tampa, Tampa yeah, grandma yeah, sets Guinness world record for weightlifting. She set a world record. Look at her. I was at just understanding years old. this guy. Man, all I know is, is I, you know, I'm the, if wife, wife wow, and I she make bench it to pressing a, good weight too. Yeah, dude. So I used to love training people in this age group. She doesn't look a hundred at all. She does not look a hundred at all, dude. She looks like she's in her late seventies. Yeah, that's remarkable. Wow. There was this one woman who cool. was in her seventies. Lift. By the way, uh, this hey. Is, by the way, see the gym she's working out in. What is? Oh, it's a gym, gym. Yeah. She ain't working out of yeah, now. Yeah, powerlifting type of gym. Yep. So great. Yeah. So so uh, the best looking older people that I've ever seen all lifted weights. Mm -hmm. All of them. Yeah. Every yeah. single time I've ever seen. There was best a 70. skin, like, yeah, like everything about them looked radiant. Mobility, yeah. like everything. There was this one woman, I remember she was in her late 60s. So not super old, but you know, older. Late 60s, pure, like total white, silver hair. She used to work out at the club that you guys ended up working at at one point. So I don't know if she was still there when you guys were there. <clears throat> but she'd come in and work out. And she'd wear like, you know, spandex, like workout clothes and stuff. And I, we, we'd we look at her like, God. I remember I went up to her. I said, if you don't mind me asking, you look phenomenal. I see you working out. You really know what you're doing. I know it's kind of rude, but I'm actually, you know, um, admiring you. Like how, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? I thought she was going to say 50. You know, Granny's got back. She was like 60 something years old. <laughs> <up there. laughs> I mean, got her phone number. <laughs> she, why, got, why, she got me a discount. Why is that? <laughs> at dinner. Yeah. With her why, why is that? Uh, why is that politically incorrect or to ask? Because people age. are insecure about it. Yeah. But why? Women. Well, yeah. Why? Uh, because society plays a high value on young, on young, on youth, especially with women where they feel like if they say they're a certain age, they're going to lose status or value. It's like asking a man how much money you make. Yeah, but at some point, it's going to be like bragging rights, you know, if you still look good. And <laughs> right. Like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm 95. Which That's is well, how I think somebody responds when they are older like that and they've taken care of themselves. It's true. They're proud. Yeah. Yeah, they're it's, proud of it's it. It's totally true. Yeah. Dude, I watched this. There's this uh, this series on Netflix I think you guys will love. So you guys know Jonah Hill is, right? Yeah. Huge fan of the guy. I think he's hilarious. But he did this like docu-series where he's interviewing his therapist. <laughs> and his therapist, the guy's name is Stutz, S-T-U-T-Z. This guy is, if you guys like really good, like, um, like insight on life and happiness and all that stuff, this guy's brilliant. So I've only seen a couple episodes with Jessica, but it's, it's filled with total gems. Netflix? Netflix. Huh. Um, and it's in, 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 uh, like I said, Jonah Hill's producing it or whatever. Okay. So check this out. This was so cool. So one of the first things he talks about is, um, <clears throat> your life force. He says, if you can organize your life force, almost everything else uh, falls in order. And, he, and this is how he labels it. It's like a pyramid, okay? And the bottom, the base of the pyramid is your physical body. I don't remember what the other ones were. I think it was family and friends and then yourself, if I'm not mistaken. So yourself is at the top, family and friends, and then uh, your body. And he said, with the base one, he says, exercise, he goes, people come in here, they're depressed, they're anxious. They find like life has no meaning, no purpose. They don't know where to go. And I get them to exercise, eat right, and sleep better. And he goes, and that fixes 85% of the people that come in. And Jonah, Jonah, and this guy's like a big, like he's this is what he does. He's obviously works with celebrities, does a good job. And he says, Are you really 85%? Absolutely. You do that. 85% of the time, I mean, you fix that. You know, that. that aligns yeah. with what we've been saying for a totally. long time. It's just cool to hear somebody in that space yeah. really acknowledge Confirming it, yeah. that uh, just, you know, so like if you're it's feeling unfortunate, that way, It's unfortunate, you know, to your point that that's not communicated. Totally. 
in mainstream like 100% like, like cuz why why do, why do we not see commercials for that type of stuff for mental health yeah. and just to feel better yeah. about life it's yeah. all about looking better so and that's what Jonah Hill said Jonah Hill said I would have started cuz you know he he struggled with weight for a long time he was really yeah. insecure about it um and he, and he opens up about it in the series and he says I when I was a kid I I I was re, uh, you know I was repelled from exercise because it was all about image and how you look and all that stuff he goes if I had known that it would have a positive impact on my mental health, he goes, I totally would have adopted it. It took me much later working with this therapist to really kind of figure that it's out. It's one of my favorite compliments that I think that we get for the show. I mm -hmm. mean, when people call in and we get a chance to talk to them and, and they, you know, tend to think, oh, it's been years that we just yep. had today. We had live callers and, you know, they call in and they say like the, 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 the number one thing I hear is we've helped help them change their relationship mm -hmm with exercise. And since then they've been so much more consistent because it's not this on off type of deal. Yeah. They reckon we, we constantly are communicating that something is better than nothing. And then there's going to be times in your life when it's 15 minute workouts, there's gonna be times when you're killing it in six days a week. It's just like, and learning how to ebb and flow and recognizing that the reason why you work out isn't just for the aesthetics. It isn't just for the way you look. It's also for all the other positive benefits in your life. And so who cares if you're lifting weights and sometimes the weight goes up a little bit on the scale because you're still getting tremendous benefits in other aspects of your life. That, that, that arguably yeah. are more important. You're right. That are arguably more. You know, it's funny. Is, uh, um, and as Jessica and I were watching this, I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty open about this and honest. Uh, for me, exercise is a very necessary anti-anxiety, antidepressant. If I didn't do those things... I think my tendency would be to go in that direction. And I notice, I know I know this about myself. That exercise for me is very much a medicine. And mm -hmm. if not that I really ever stop for long periods of time, <clears throat> but I know like uh my mental state changes so much oh. from a workout. I could be in an argument, I could be, I could think negative about a workout. And I just all of a sudden become like elevated and evolved. And I think I can about things. like physically feel myself getting like either angry or depressed. If I haven't moved very often yeah. throughout the week, like it's just one of those, just the sedentary nature of it. Just, you just feel the impact of like how you think about things or like stresses or, or, um, tasks, especially that you need to accomplish. Like you look at it completely differently when you feel like shit and you haven't mm. been expressing movement. It's just like, it's, it's totally a so I, thing for me. I haven't quite wrapped my brain completely around that phenomenon that you both are explaining right now, because sometimes it's a blessing and it's a curse, right? That you've learned to attach all the positive things sure. that workout mm. gives you so that when you miss it, you also go like, fuck, I'm yeah. less of a husband. I'm less of a father. I'm less of a get oh, yeah, house. double-edged sword. Yeah, yeah, it's a kind of a yeah. double-edged yeah. sword because I do know how important. So to your point, like I've caught myself before, just kind of in a negative mood because I didn't get to my workout. Yeah, uh, yeah, I didn't get to my workout, and so then I'm 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 kind of a negative Nancy because I know how important it is, and so there is kind of a, a an interesting dichotomy right there, right there. You go, yeah, oh, wow. you push yourself if you didn't do it. Yeah. Like, well, well, I know, and I and I've kind of gone through that, and then also it was for me, I just kind of reduce it back to just overall movement like so if i'm at least getting like active and i'm yes. up and i'm moving yes. like that's i have to do that you yeah. know yep. it's it's so you know I, I don't need to like punish myself for not getting my workouts to, to that point but uh, i do need to express that's a real that's myself. a really good point and i think that's, that's what been, I've that's been too. the evolution for me too yeah. it's just like okay maybe i didn't get my workout but then i washed two cars it took two and a half three hours yeah, just got up and moved yeah get up. went on an hour yeah. walk and listened to a podcast that i want to listen to at least i went and did something physically active and positive for me so i think that's key hey so um i just i read something really interesting today i didn't know this but there's a possible connection between a low sodium diet and insulin uh resistance huh. so why because insulin helps the kidneys retain water okay and if your sodium is low your body needs to so it pulls in, in, increase its insulin to help your kidneys uh, retain more water so according to what i read in some cases increasing sodium can help somebody with their insulin uh, sensitivity. Now, the reason why the reason why a lot of people don't necessarily talk about this is because oftentimes people with diabetes or insulin, uh, you know, resistance, are eating a diet that's high in sodium because heavily processed foods, foods yeah. tend to come with lots of sodium. So they're eating a shitty diet. Then there's high sodium, and they connect th those things. But in reality, 
so oftentimes if people are trying to eat healthy and they think, oh, I'm going to eat real low sodium, mm -hmm. that that could actually cause issues with uh, with insulin. So especially if you eat low carb or you eat a non-processed food diet. Well, I wonder too how many people, um, you know, have hypertension at the same time, you know, that, that are in that uh, diabetic kind of state. Yeah. Because, I mean, I just know like, for instance, my – my dad or like somebody in that kind of category mm -hmm. that's already kind of unhealthy. And so to now add, so people they are a little, you know, we leery of like adding that as like, I know. Uh, yeah. Advice. Yeah. It's very, really interesting. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway. So, um, I got to tell you guys a funny story about this, this girl that got detained at the airport for smuggling something through, uh, security. <laughs> How did she smuggle it? Well, um, so here's what happened. I read this story in an orifice. I read this story and she, so she, she videoed this in social media. That word. She did it. She made a thing out of it. Yeah. Okay. So this is going to get weird. <laughs> she okay. made a reel out of it. This is going to get weird. Her boyfriend died. Okay. On this trip? No. Oh, her boyfriend died. So they cremated him. She took his ashes, put it in a butt plug. <laughs> that, was of, that was made out of metal. Wore the butt plug and tried to get through security, yeah, and they enough. caught her, and they found it, and she got in trouble, and she filmed just the whole how thing. her boyfriend would have wanted it. Okay. Yeah, dude. Why? Okay, <laughs> he probably wrote that in. <laughs> Why would you it. need to smuggle somebody's ashes? I, she was doing this, I think, as a as a social media thing or whatever, but. Like what? I don't know. Are people like people just don't? Bro, it's don't so value, that desperate for attention. It's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's so hard to. Maybe to that was now, his wish, though, when he died, though. On yeah, the, it's on like the, me. Dude, like, I've maybe. always He's, wanted to just live in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, "What's your what's your dying wish?" Like, oh, Steve, and you're hilarious. Carry me around. Don't, the lengths the lengths that we will go for social media attention now is bro. There's no limits to that at all. That's so funny. You imagine being the uh, the the security guy that or girl that found that it's like you're with the wand. Beep. You're like, wait a minute. Beep. I'm, as a species, I truly have felt like we've continued to evolve to get smarter and smarter and smarter. And Meanwhile, for the first time in in my life or that or I, that I can remember or historically I'm familiar with, it, it seems to be like looking like a bell curve now. Uh, it's, oh, we're it's on the way. Oh, we're on the way down the other side. Idiocracy is in full steam right now. That's right. a movie everybody needs to watch. Yes, by the way. please do. That's Which a, one? Media Idi idiocracy. idiocracy. I don't know if I saw that one or not. Oh, it's not. instant classic. It's it, Mike Judge. It, it's it's the same it's a guy as Office classic. Space. Okay, and it's just yeah, it's so older, relevant. Yeah. It's uh, God, when was it? Late nineties. Yeah, it's got to be. So the 90s. dude, dude gets. I think he gets stuck in a cryogenic like chamber. Uh huh. And then <clears throat> they, I don't remember how it happens. I forgot. I watched it once, but yeah. he, he wakes up in the future, way in the future. Yeah. And he's just an average guy. He's just a regular dude. Yeah. Yeah. He's like a regular, like whatever guy. Right. Anyway, he wakes up in the future. And what they showed was, is while he was frozen over however many thousands of years, that dumb people were having lots of kids and smart people weren't. So they were showing how human evolution started going in that direction. And then yeah. he comes out and it's in the future and he's the smartest man on earth. Yeah, the smartest and, guy. Yeah, yeah. And, like, and he's a kind of a dumb and guy. And the president is a pro wrestler. Yeah, he's just a regular guy. Yeah. <laughs> he's the just, accuracy, bro. The yeah, accuracy. No, that. No, I'm dude. telling you. Dude. I mean, I'm it's, calling The Rock will be the president, bro. No, and he solves the, next, he solves the, the all funniest, the, most relevant movie right he now. He solves all the world's yeah. problems because the world's problems are so... Is like, this it right there, Doug? That's yeah. it right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, so there's this like energy Luke drink. Wilson, yeah. There's this energy drink that they just they use for everything. They drink it. It's got electrolytes in it. It's called Brondo or something like that. Brando. No, and it's like it's like Gatorade. I can't believe I've never seen this. And oh my god! All dude. the crops are dying. They're like watering dying. it. Yeah, this is water. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, he's like, like, I think we should just use water. And everyone's like, this guy's brilliant. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's like, but it's got electrolytes. Doesn't it feel like we're trapped in that right now? I'm I telling do. you, dude. Every leader coming up, like, like people trying to run for president. Like, oh. what is happening, dude? Oh, bro. We it's are. We are. In dumb there was no flat earthers when I was a kid. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, it's that's what we are. We're going the opposite direction. It's they find each other, oh, man, and so it is. so it gets exaggerated. Do you yeah. think? Well, you know, I think yeah. You're also dude. indoctrinating other idiots, though. Well, I mean, shit. If you're stupid by yourself, you're kind of like, oh, am I right? And then you find ten other people <laughs> like you. <laughs> they all agree. 
<laughs> yeah, you like, double down. You double down. Yeah. 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 P- birds aren't real. You think that too? I knew it. You know? <laughs> well, that is. There's some truth. To that. Hey, did you? Did so? I, I just read this. They they're they're doing this experimental vaccine. Uh oh, vaccine talk. I, uh, I've been seeing uh, ads for more and more vaccines right now. I, well, I mean, it's like a new trendy thing. Well, yeah. no, they've been, vaccine been around for a while. No, no, yeah, but to see it, <laughs> no, but like it's to see it new... to see it advertised a lot and like the vaccine for this, a vaccine for that. Right. I've seen it. Just pop wait up. till they have a vaccine for depression or something. Like that. Anyway, this is a there's a vaccine that they're working on for animal that they're testing on animals for fentanyl. Wow. So it's a vaccine they give it to you and it prevents fentanyl from getting into your brain. So you take fentanyl and you get no effect. So the theory is we can vaccinate people, therefore they won't get addicted to this very powerful opioid. Oh, opioid. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I don't think that's a good strategy. I think yeah. people are gonna figure out a way to take some other of shit. Of course they I've, will. You know? Yeah. So okay, so it, it doesn't Ooh, affect it doesn't the affect the brain and it also they don't get the high from it anymore. Correct. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, they'll just choose a different drug. I, that's what I was You're not saying. solving the root cause. That's a hundred percent what I was saying. Yeah. I mean they'll they'll I mean even people if it was, will abuse anything. Yeah. No, yeah. if you can't although I mean we see this you see this in almost anybody who has uh, battles any sort of addiction, whether it be <laughs> pornography, drugs. Drugs, alcoholism, smoking food? cigarettes, food. Yeah. yeah, you just you you finally you you find something like that that gives you a temporary fix on the thing. Like like right, right, somebody who's addicted to food, you know, you could staple your stomach, yeah. you know what I'm saying, and have a tiny so you can't possibly eat anymore. Yeah. But what ends up happening is then you pick up alcoholism or you pick up smoking or you pick up heroin or you yep. pick up something else or gambling or like there's so many things that because you don't ever address the root cause. Are there just, any good stats on that? Because it does seem like fentanyl deaths have increased. They like, have. They have. They have. They have. They've. They've definitely. That's gone. probably why this is. A, yeah. Why so it looks like a really. So big what's issue. happening is they're importing raw materials from China. Which, by and, the way, that's how they use. They'll use that narrative to push the vaccine. Yeah. Sure. Oh, they'll use that. As, they'll yeah. use that as the, the way to campaign. Well, is that? Oh, we've seen this well, the alarming increase, of it, yeah. and we're going to save. You know, tens of thousands of people's lives by doing this. When in reality, no. We're, yeah. We're plus, like, I wonder if you could just change the fentanyl a little bit so that it bypasses whatever the vaccine did. But anyway, they're getting all the raw materials from China, and they can't ban or block those because pharmaceutical companies need them. Mm. So what's happening? Because fentanyl it's homegrown. They're taking these raw materials, making the fentanyl here, pressing them into pills and selling them, and the and the 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 deaths have exploded. Yeah. You know, like 500,000 people what is, died from overdose of fentanyl. Doug, wow. what is, uh, what, what family is, is, is fentanyl come from? Is it like an opiate? Yes, is it, it is. Is, yeah. is it like heroin? Yes. yes. Way more powerful. I heard. Yes. It, way more powerful I heard than heroin? More. Yeah. Oh, it is. I, I don't know about heroin. Oh, I don't. Well, more, <laughs> it's more of a powerful opiate. Opiate. I didn't hear heroin, but <laughs> sounds worse. Uh, sounds worse. People I don't, I don't know if it actually necessarily well, I know. is. I know it's in that category. It's a well, I would like to see it. Let's see heroin deaths versus fentanyl. Well, deaths. well, that's because fentanyl is so easily accessible. You don't have to inject, inject it. And which okay, yeah. So what is that right there? It's a synthetic opioid that is fifty times stronger than heroin. Justin wins again. Thank Up you. to fifty times stronger. Yes, and one hundred times stronger than morphine. Wow. See, this is what happens wow. when I second guess myself. God, God, stop doing guys. that, Jesse. Do you know that's happened like that's happened like five times now on the podcast. Yes, I know. I'm Where you were right, right. and I never question. I should never question you. Dude. Never. You guys should wow, never do that. that strong. Yeah. It is, wow. and what's happening is that kids are buying these pills, dude. and they're used to a particular dose of whatever opiate that they normally take. Then they take fentanyl, and because it's so much stronger, overdose. I mean, these overdose death, uh, overdose deaths from fentanyl. Crazy. Yes. Wow. Okay. Crazy, so, right? I mean, obviously, is a big problem, and they're trying to solve it with that, which I don't think that's the answer. But no. that's, yeah, that's that's crazy. Yeah. Well, it's like, that. wasn't there one, there was a drug, I want to say- Oxycontin? Was, no, there was something for alcohol, where they give it to you, and then if you drink alcohol, you just get sick, if I wasn't mistaken. Um, and that's been around for a little while. Maybe Doug could figure out what that is. They, you know, they made that for sugar, too. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah, there's a company that does that where you like oh, chew yeah. gum or you chew, have this pill or what you take, and then it, it reacts with sugar. So, so when you eat sugar, it doesn't taste good? Yeah, it tastes yeah. like shit. Well, so now awful. you just reprogram your association with a lot of these foods that way, right? You're probably right. What does it say, Doug? Uh, I don't know if this is the right one. It's a um, disulfiram is a medication that's used to treat alcohol use disorder. Cause people who drink a- alcohol while taking this medication to become very sick. That's yeah. it. That's it. That's the one. Okay. So they'll give alcoholics this this medicine, and then they can't drink alcohol anymore because it makes them sick. And I mean, is it cured alcoholism? I don't think it's had a big impact. 
You know, you know what would be smart is to, if you had somebody in your family that you snuck that in, but you didn't tell them. Because if you took it yourself, you could just stop taking it. Yeah, psychologically, you would know that, like, oh, it's because I took this pill. Yeah. But if you someone snuck it in and you didn't know, and every time you fucking drank, you started getting sick again, maybe I'm, you would create the association. You'd only have to do it a few times. That's right. They'd be like, fuck, I can't drink anymore. I can't drink anymore. Just got, and then they yeah. had no idea that. And then they'd be like, oh, maybe I'll try rum instead. You know, you keep <laughs> going down the line. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're like, I'll it's do not working. And then they're like, I'll do fentanyl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, I gotta go to fentanyl. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're fine. And then you're, and then you're, dude, Ruin speaking, their life speaking of drugs, there's a, uh, I just read this today. Um, <laughs> there was a popular tourist beach in Mexico. Let me see. A popular Mexican resort town. Let's figure out what this place is. It's a drug transition. This is good. I know. It's really good, right? Mm. I, I, I got to find what the name was. Uh, visitors to Acapulco's famed Playa Condesa. So people are on the beach. They're like, yeah, this is cool. This is good. Oh, bodies washing up on the shore. What? Oh, my God. Yeah. And they were they were all uh, tortured and beaten and like <laughs> from, the, from the cartel. From the cartels? Yeah, what? dude. What? Yeah, yeah one imagine? was with gunshot wounds. Another one was uh, tied to a cement anchor. What? Uh, another one was lying face up in the sand. This is like this a, is a popular popular destination. Yeah, like, dude. Like, yeah. Resort. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Oof. Yes. Wow. That's not cool. Imagine, dude. With your kids. Hey, dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With some, some floating that out That guy's there. sleeping. Yeah. Dude, that's wow. crazy. That is crazy. Yeah, the bro. drug war is getting really, uh, apparently really crazy over there. It's getting worse? Um, I, I don't know. I, I know it was for a second. I don't know about now, but I know that they declared like this. They're like, we're going to go to war with them. And it just ramped up the, the violence. I don't know what is worse is having like a, a country that's full of our cartel people like this with bodies washing up or living in America where they're all fucking politicians and you think that they're good people. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Like mm. what is they, worse? They tell you what you want to hear, but they just steal all your stuff. Yeah. 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 And then they're smarter than you just, I, they, I, like cartel is like. They're straight, gangster as fuck. They're, they're like, straight, let the body wash you, you up there. You know what you're dealing let with. Let the people know. Yeah. They're straight. Let the people yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> let the people know what we did. You, you know what I'm saying? You sound we're, like <laughs> where the politicians are not doing it like that, dude. You they're, sound like my grandfather. My grandfather yeah, used, to be, yeah. used to be like, oh yeah, the mafia takes your money. What do you think they do over here? They take your money too. <laughs> yeah, it's they do. It's uh, to me. I, okay, that, this I know this can be controversial, but no, I, I, come on, bro. They're not. I, I I I would prefer. No, don't do. No, that. you don't. Don't Yes, you won't. you You say that. You say that it's just as it's just as corrupt here it's just different kind of corrupt i don't know how many bodies are washing up on yeah. shore though what's, well, what's what do you, you do you think they just hey okay so neck. okay do you think the the cartel and the mob just killed random people for random people or do they do people that stole from them people that didn't pay their shit didn't do the shit or do you think they did it to just random people trust me there's a lot of people getting caught in the crossfire and and yeah. that's fair and how many people do you think get caught in the crossfire in the u.s for the u.s fucking people over uh i don't know adam not tons. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah uh, I'll live there for a Maybe while. Uh, Tell it me country. how it goes. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. About, bro? Don't pay back your, your... I've watched too many Narcos you know, series on Netflix uh, yeah. to say I want that. Don't pay off your car loan. I'm not saying car. that I want don't that. Pay what, I'm saying, what I'm saying is that I think people are blind if you don't think yeah. that it's damn near as gnarly over here. It's a different kind of gnarly. It's a different game we play here. Mm. We play a diff we play a different game that, that... And over there is gangster and old school. Mob and cartel life is... Old school gangster well, shit. Well, U.S. is modern day gangster well, like, shit. To use an example, I'm going to disagree with you, but to use an example, there's that guy. What was his name? Robert Ol Olbrich? Was that his name? The guy who had who, who did the Silk Road? Was that oh, his name? Yeah. It was. I think it's Robert Olbrich. I'm going to look it up because I wrote it down. Yeah, you bring up the STX gangsters. Right Ro now. Oh, Ross Olbrich. O Olbright, right? He did mm -hmm. the Silk Road, mm -hmm. where people are voluntarily buying and selling drugs from each other. So nobody's being forced. Not saying that it's good or bad. I'm just saying it's true that people chose to go on there to buy drugs and people are choosing to sell it. And so it's this voluntary interaction. He gets two life sentences plus 15 years. So he gets busted for having this website goes and goes to jail forever. Forever. He's gone, yeah. right? Then you got the dude that built FTX. Literally stole $10 billion yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. from average people. Nothing. Nothing so far. Yeah, hey, Doug, pull up a staff room right now because you guys are irritating me with this. this argument. <laughs> <laughs> tell me how. Tell me how many people in the United States die of prescription drugs, and then I want you to tell me how many people in the cartel kill people in a year. Oh well, yeah. that's not the same. Well, not, what do you mean it's not the same? We push drugs on people. Eighty percent of our advertising is ran by by pharmaceutical companies. We get people hooked on prescription drugs. It's an alarm. Give me the number. 
What the, well, what the a lot. Okay. It's a lot. How many people did the cartel kill? Uh, I mean, less. do you think it's the same amount of How people? Many no. Colombian do you think it's even are... close? <laughs> no. I, mean, I don't think it's apples to apples either. Yeah, though. that's not so weird. You guys are no, no, no. You guys are funny to me that okay, because it's all oh, they shot them in the head. That's so much worse than like getting them hooked on pills for twenty years and then them, them shooting themselves. Uh, well, no, but it's not. Di- I mean, it's not a really a direct comparison. Of course it's not. It's not exactly Apple. Pull up the numbers for me so we can see how alarmingly different it is right here. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot, dude. You, yes, definitely more people die. Okay. Prescription drugs. Okay, so so explain to me. I think it's a little stressful. Uh, yeah, that environment. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Dude, I'd rather deal with I my mean, doctor. Like, just for your average person, I'm just thinking about it. I don't know. Like, I'd rather. Uh, would you rather They, they want to be lied to and they want to feel like they yeah. have the choice. Kind of say, they want right? to they they believe like the choice. choice. It was, yeah. Exactly. I'm. I, and that's all I got to contribute. Like, yeah. you know, maybe the lies are a little more soothing at night, but um, you I know, don't know. having it visibly right in front of you and the, the threat of violence. You have the is... option of going to your doctor or El Chapo. Like, which one do you yeah. do? <laughs> it He's ain't right. like hey, that. Hey, take bro. some Vicodin. It ain't like that. <laughs> Where are my numbers at, bro? Well, I'm getting the numbers. They seem awful low. What, uh, the cartel killing people? No, the drug overdose. Uh, this is opioids. 3,400 oh. people in 1999, 17,000 in no way. T- 2017. Oh, wow. But prescription drugs are, in fact, the third leading cause of death. Oh, wow. With how yeah. many? What's the number? I'm trying to get a number here for okay, you, Okay, so then, then also give me the cartel number. Uh, so 932,000 people have died since 1999, which seems low to Ooh. me uh, on that. Yeah. Million people, huh? Okay, so but you're talking about people out on the street with guns shooting people in the head. Okay, okay so... Their necks and okay, their so explain out. to me yeah. what is worse, though. A, a, a smaller percentage having crazy, scarier deaths or a, a, a number that is a thousand times bigger that a, a okay. slow, a slow, sneaky death? Hold on a second. But they're also <laughs> selling the drugs at Cartel, <laughs> yes. so there's a lot of people dying like from the drugs argument. that they're selling also, as well. drug overdose. Okay, so look, here's the deal. One of the leading places for pharmaceutical prescriptions would be like, I don't know, Miami or... Fort Lauderdale, right? Florida, we have all those retirees. Would you rather live there? Well, or, of course I'd rather live in Florida. Or would you than rather Mexico. live in <laughs> Doug, find find me a cartel like you know, city you know, Juarez. Juarez. Yeah. Where would you rather live, bro? <laughs> That's just it. I mean, I'm I'm worried about the crossfire personally. Yeah. The the point I'm really trying to make, of course I would rather live in fucking Miami, Florida than I would rather live anywhere in Mexico. Okay. Yeah, so that's yeah. that's but the point is that we pretend in this country that we're, 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 we're so sophisticated and we're not evil. We're not as bad. And the cartel is so scary and so bad. It's like, what to me, I would rather be faced with evil and the bat knowing that they are, that they let are you dead. Doing, are you doing PR for the car- cartel? No. <laughs> it kind of feels like it a little bit. <laughs> He's like the thank you for not we're talking just, guy. But we're just, you guys, we're just, we're just different in that area. The phone. We're different. We're different. We're definitely different in that He's area. Like, I, I need you Spanish. Hey, are they dude, paying a sponsorship on, money? What's going on here? Are we getting underground money, underhead money from the cartels? Say some good things about us. Compare us to the U.S. government. Yeah. And you're all good. All right. Yeah. Speaking of things that affect you uh, and cause changes in your mental state. What are you guys thinking about the brain blend from Ned? You guys have been using that now for a while. <laughs> I, I see. I mean, it's not fentanyl, but definitely not going to kill you. It's not going to do that. I noticed you got you and pretty use it every day. I actually, yeah. this is so they've done a couple of new products that we have we used, and then there's a few of them that I'd use, and then I'd be like, whatever. Obviously, I've talked about Mellow being my absolute favorite product that Ned's done. This is now my second favorite product that I've done is the brain blend. Feels good. I'm using it consistently because I I I feel like I can feel a difference when we podcast, when we do yeah. before, yes. when I don't. Yeah. So Both I do you like guys it. are using Just, it pretty oh, much yeah, every way single time. Way sharper with it, yeah. And I do it pretty much before every podcast now. And yeah. combined with like my caffeine drink, I absolutely love Bro, it. The combination of the two a, of them together is like... What yeah. a great combination, Yeah, the two of those. No, that's, no, no, my, that's my That's my jam right there. Oh, you know what? I want to give out... We got to do a mention, right? For, oh, yeah, yeah. Can we keep that going? Yeah, yeah I got one for you. Okay. Old school bodybuilding... Bodybuilding Z, S-Y at the end. So old school bodybuilding and then S-Y. Doug, you can look it up. It's got great posts of old school bodybuilders, strength athletes, how they worked out, quotes, stuff like that. Really cool stuff. I love watching stuff like that. Very cool. Cool page on on Instagram. I'm on it. Go check them out. Check this out. You're not what you eat. You're what you digest. Digestive enzymes tend to drop in your body as you age. And this may be why you're noticing digestive issues. Well, you could supplement with digestive enzymes to help break down proteins, fats, and carbohydrates for better digestion, better assimilation of those nutrients. Now, there is a company that makes digestive enzymes specifically for fitness-minded people. It's called Masszymes. It's the best digestive enzyme company that we found. 
Go check them out. Go to masszymes.com. That's M A S S Z Y M E S.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 10 for 10% off any order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Drew from Colorado. Drew, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys, what's going on? So good to uh, be on your show. Yeah, thanks for calling. Uh, yeah, so quick background. Um, I'm running anabolic for the second time around after running anabolic then performance, and then power lift. Uh, I'm really enjoying anabolic again. But during my overhead press in phase one, um, I really can't go above 95 pounds without getting some pain in my mid-back. I think it's my erectors, but you know, it's kind of when I'm pressing up and getting my head out of the way so it doesn't hit my chin. My back is hurting pretty bad. Um, I do have pretty good shoulder mobility. I work on it daily with, um, Indian clubs and mace bells and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's just really frustrating not be able to go above that weight. And, um, I should also note that I do have hypermobility and I have had sh uh, shoulder surgery before on both shoulders. Where's, where's your hypermobility? Is this, uh, throughout the whole body or just in your shoulders? Uh, it's, it's kind of throughout the whole body, but mostly in my knees. Um, like I don't get any, uh, quad flexion when I hyperextend my knees. Same with like my glutes. Um, I can't, if I hyperextend my hips forward, I don't get any glute firing either. So you're just overall mm. super flexible. Yeah. Okay. This is a core stability issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you're pressing up above your head, what you want to do is you want to brace your core really hard. So you don't overarch your back to press the bar above your head. So what you're doing is you're overarching and you're probably feeling some shearing forces in your in your drop in your, the overhead back. press for a Z press. Z press would be good, but you got to brace your core because yeah. well, he, he doesn't have an forces option. him. He doesn't have he doesn't have an option. Which, that's well, why he's going to fall over. That's why that's <laughs> yeah, why I like exactly. the Z press is exactly this is a, a great a great example of where I would pull out anywhere in a program where it says overhead press and we would Z press. Yeah, another thing too is you could do one arm overhead carry. Yeah, overhead carries and one arm presses where you keep one hand on your core to, to activate it. So you put your hand on your belly, mm -hmm. brace your core. Don't arch your back as you press up with the weight because it's that overarching that's causing uh, the problem. That's what it sounds like. So really tense up your, your core like somebody's going to come and punch you in the stomach while you're trying to do this press. Um, you may have to go lighter in order to, to make this happen because it's going to be a new recruitment pattern. Okay, awesome. So do the Z press instead of overhead press and work on the core. So you're saying I shouldn't skip the ab exercises and MAPS anabolic, right? No, no, no. There's, <laughs> yeah. no there's yeah. So it's not that you, okay, so so you got to understand it's not necessarily a weakness. It's, uh, and I, I, don't, I want to say that because you might be able to do lots of ab exercises mm -hmm. and core exercises. It's just, it's just not bracing properly and you're overcompensating. Connectivity issue. Yeah, you're really Art, you're arching your back to try to get the bar overhead versus staying okay. a little bit more upright and rigid. So when you do the press next time, before you press the bar, brace your core real hard. Don't allow your body to arch and then see if you could press the barbell overhead and how that feels. All right. Well, thanks guys. And, and you know, I do need to tell you guys a big thank you. Um, coming out of college, I weighed about 350 pounds. Um, and I found you guys shortly after, and since then has completely changed my life. Um, I've been listening to you guys for about four years now, and it's been incredible. The messages you guys uh, give about fitness and making it a part of your life and chasing health and not aesthetics, um, it really resonated with me, and it's changed my life. So thank you guys so much. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, but yeah. we should send, let's send them a program, right? Because you are doing. You have what, MAPS Anabolic? What programs do you have? Does he have symmetry? I have a lot. I pretty much have them all. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. thank you. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great. They're right. fantastic. So. Awesome. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, keep in touch. Let us know what happens. we Will do. Thank you guys so much. All thank right, you. Drew. Right on. Bye-bye. Sometimes people would feel this with uh, cable rows too, and it's just they had to just brace their core to offset the overarching. Um, could also just be tightness in the mid, uh, mid upper back, but yeah. this is not uncommon, right? It's not yeah, well, it's thing. body's natural way of protecting itself by compensating and kind of like making sure that it's secure. So yeah, to be able to slow down and really focus on bracing and making yeah. sure that mechanisms happening is everything. Yeah, I, I actually think it's more common than, uh, we were, I mean, 
for different reasons, right? It could be tight lats. Yeah. It could be mm -hmm. uh, forward shoulder. It's all compensation. Right? Yeah. So, so it's, you know, when you're trying to press a bar up above your head, if you have really tight lats or you have, you lack the, the shoulder mobility or you are in a rounded position with the scapula, like all those things could cause what he's yeah. feeling. This is why I love the Z press because it literally eliminates that. Like you cannot press that weight up above your head without stabilizing the core, mm -hmm. without having good mobility in your shoulders, without retracting the scapula. It just he's gonna have to go down to the bar. Yeah, yep. you start off with that, but That's fine. but get strong on that. If you like start with the bar on Z pressing and work your way at getting strong on that, and then mm -hmm. go back to a press and use the advice that you said with, you know, tightening your core as you press and see what happens. Yeah. And really packing the shoulder and going through that part of it and everything else. Like once he really starts dialing that in, it's going to be uh, absolved. Our next caller is Grail from Wisconsin. Hey, what's happening, man? How can we help you? All right. Uh, so my question is I uh, eat a relatively high carb diet. Um, because I want to get proper fiber. Uh, I've been eating oatmeal every day because it's the first thing I think of as a breakfast food that has fiber and I, I like it. Um, I'd like to lower my carb intake. So how could I do this while uh, still properly getting fiber? And I've been reading that oatmeal is actually not that good for you. Maybe tired or something. Or um, is oatmeal really bad for you? Okay, so let's start with the low carb thing. You can get fiber um, from well cooked fibrous vegetables and uh, berries. Berries are low in calories and carbohydrates and also high in fiber. But well cooked right. vegetables are easy easy sources of of a uh, fiber that can give you kind of what you need. Doesn't have to come from carbohydrate sources. Oatmeal can be very good or very bad. Depends on the rest of your diet and how you react and respond to it. Yeah, if you um, like right. it and it's working for you, it's not bad, bro. No, I, I would generally it's a health food. That's that's where I, I would categorize it. Generally, as something right. that's healthy. It's uh, you know either gluten free or maybe gluten residue if it's made with uh, other products. But usually, it's gluten free. It's usually easy to tolerate. Good source of carbohydrates. Easy, long shelf life, inexpensive. It's a good source of carbohydrates. So it's actually a pretty good right. uh, breakfast. Now, if you eat oatmeal in the morning and find yourself not feeling good. It might not be for you, but for most people, uh, oatmeal is, is pretty good. So is that oh, yeah. you guys answer your question? Yeah, definitely. Okay. I see here you're also asking what, what are the best healthy fats for getting muscle mass? Did you want some answers on that as oh, well? Oh, yeah. Well, my goal was to um, maybe switch from, because I'm, I'm slightly pre-diabetic, so I wanted to lower my carb intake just on to take it easy on my pancreas and higher, get like higher healthy fats. Um, so I thought maybe that'd be something good for me. Cause I'm in a newbie stage where I'm still putting on mass. Um, my weight has been dropping, man. I've been eating, you got, I've been following you guys' little program to just eat and lift and it's been dropping off. So I don't know. I might just keep it the same, I guess. Usually if you're losing body fat and you're in a calorie deficit, usually that'll positively affect your blood sugar. Okay. So, right. you, so, yeah. you, you know, I still monitor it because you can go, you can eat a diet that's got carbohydrates in it and eat, uh, properly for yourself and, and have great improvements. It's the calories, right. you know, too many calories usually cause the issue. Now you can go low carb, which is another step. And some people see a lot of success with that. And so the question is what kind of fats should I aim for? This can be quite individual, but I would stick to natural fats. Yeah. So avocados, chicken thighs, steak. Uh, I mean, that's oh, uh, right. yeah. Olive oil. Olive oil is like a superfood. Uh, it's a great healthy fat. Most people do really well with it. Um, you know, gotcha. yeah. And, and, you know, the animal fats, some people have issues with them. Other people don't. Um, but if you find that saturated fat intake has a negative impact on your, on your, on your blood lipids, you could try grass fed meats, um, pasture raised eggs. They have higher uh, amounts of omega-3 fatty acids um, than the conventional type of stuff. But if your calories are low, generally you'll just see improvements regardless. Also keep right. in mind, if if things are working really well for yourself too, there's not much I, I'm messing with. Like if you like oatmeal, it's sitting well with you. You're seeing great results. You're building muscle. You're slowly leaning out. If you're also getting stronger too. I mean, if all, all signs are pointing in that you're doing things pretty well right now, don't get caught up sometimes in the the Instagram hype of somebody doing the alarmist post of, oh, oatmeal is bad for you. Oh, yeah. this is, you know, that's, I know there's so much of that. 
in social media where all of a sudden one day you think you're doing something right. Next day you see some expert say that this is bad for you. And so, you know, be for careful sure. of that. Yeah. Be careful of that. And it sounds like you're doing a really good job right now. Yeah. And then just side note, the best thing you could do for insulin sensitivity is build and strengthen muscle. Uh, muscle is very insulin sensitive. So it's, I mean, you could, there's studies on people who are obese and they don't do anything but get them to build muscle. And you see these improvements in how their body responds to insulin. So building muscle alone, and it's another store, it's, you know, it stores glycogen. It's where carbohydrates get turned into energy. It's insulin sensitive. So building muscle is a great strategy for improving your, your blood sugar and your insulin sensitivity. What MAPS programs do you have right now? I don't. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's, Let's I, I get you started on MAPS Anabolic, anabolic dude. Yeah. You'll, yeah, MAPS Anabolic. That'll be a great program for you to start with. And, and then I'd follow that up with MAPS Performance and MAPS Aesthetic. But Anabolic will be a great program for you. Gotcha. Yep. Doug's going to send that over to you, bro. All right. Sounds good. All right, man. You got it, man. Thanks for calling in. All right, boss. Have a good day. All right, you, you too. too. He, look, he looks like uh, he'd hang out with uh, the Diaz brothers. But yeah, they look like they come from the totally same like the same crew or whatever. I feel like he's, you know, he is doing a good job right now. And you just end up questioning yourself, right? Well, I mean, I th it sounded like somebody he'd seen something recent that someone said yeah. that like oatmeal's bad or what like that. And, you know, it's unfortunate what what's happened to, you know, so many good things because of social media. I mean, obviously, I'm very blessed. We've built a business off of it. We've yeah. had the ability to the podcast and connect to so many people. But the unfortunate part now is there's so much information. Well, the only way to get attention now is to be an alarmist. No, you're right. And that's the only, like, to be counter what everybody believes to be true. And so then as a consumer, you're like, wait a second, I just heard the other day that yeah. this is good. Now this guy who's a doctor or this yep. person who's an authority is telling me that this is bad. And it's like, bro, you are doing good. If you're, you're, if you are seeing yourself lean out, build muscle, uh, blood sugar is looking good. Like uh, everything. I mean, you're probably doing pretty damn good. Yeah. Right? And, the, and, the, yeah. and the, the worst part about it is people who feel like crap will ignore that they feel like crap because they read that the diet that they're on it's, is supposedly yeah, amazing. Right. And then on the flip, people who feel great will question their diet that they're on because they read mm -hmm. something that says that that diet isn't Change good. things unnecessarily. Yeah, at the end of the day, like listen to your body. If your digestion is good, you're getting leaner. Blood lipids look good. Blood sugar looks good. Performance looks good. You're probably okay. You're probably doing all right. Our next caller is Joanne from Florida. Hi, Joanne. How can we help you? Hi, guys. Um, I want to get your opinion on a situation because I know you guys are full of opinions. <laughs> and I do want to credit you for giving me like my life back. I've listened to you now for three years. And I started on Anabolic last year and did aesthetic and performance as well. So I'm running through anabolic for my second time through. Thank you guys for saving me from overtraining. Um, but my issue now is that I'm with a coach who is, um, I, I think I'm at too low of a deficit, even though I can't wait to lose weight. Um, I'm now on my second cold in a month from being at this free range. And um, I know Adam's the expert on reverse dieting, but um I just wanted to see what you guys thought of how the process is going. Where where were your calories at before and where are your calories at now that they cut you? Well, she had us do about a month of running our own, you know, just not changing anything and tracking. So I was probably somewhere around 1800 to 2000. I mean, I was definitely needing to tighten up. So when she put me on the, the fat loss phase, I guess we were at 1600 and she's dropped me now to 1200 been at 1200 for about five weeks and how do you feel right now you've gotten sick twice you said how does your <laughs> how does your energy feel how does your strength feel how many do you have any idea like how much you move throughout the day are you do you have a sedentary job do you step a lot you have any idea uh oh my steps i don't even count them i have a desk job i have a 45 minute commute either way my workouts are about the main thing that i do for movement um i would rather be doing cardio just to keep you know functional um i try to lift two days a week and do cardio on the other days just for some movement and she told me to cut out the cardio because obviously she thought it was interfering at this low rate i guess <clears throat> it says here that you, you're you're also not having much energy and skipping workouts because of the low calories yeah, yeah. that's true so i mean i i would often prefer to lift every other day, but I will find it. So maybe Sunday when I lift and I might not feel 
up to it again until like Saturday. But lately what I've been doing is just when I get home, I say there's no real excuse to not lift because you guys give us so many minutes between sessions or sets, I would say. So I just go ahead and push through it. Mm. Joanne, what does your gut tell you about this diet? Does, does it, what, what do you, what do you, I, cause I, I, it sounds like you want us to confirm what you already are feeling. You're kind of, you're, um, the way you're asking questions, it sounds like you know the answer, but I want to ask you directly. Do you well, think, how do you feel about your calories? I mean, I, I think I could be wrong. That's why I'm asking because I feel like this is, I mean, it's a balanced macro split. It's about 30, 30, 30. I mean, she was very clear about not wanting to take us too low. And I just think I'm being a baby and not wanting to do what I'm told to do, to be honest. <laughs> well, look, if, if you're feeling really low energy, you're getting sick often, you're not working out like you, like you, uh, like you want to. So you're losing strength. You're not feeling great. Um, if you're, uh, if you're, if your weight loss is feeling like it's stalling or not consistent, like if all those things are happening, I think you're, you're I think going on a cut right now is probably not a good idea. I think it might be a better idea to continue to focus on feeding your body, building strength, and getting yourself to a point where cutting doesn't bring you down as low as 1,200 calories. Like, where are you going to go from here? In other words, yeah. like- I, I mean, I could tell you what I would do with you. I mean, I would I would actually keep you up in the 1,800 calorie range, uh, but make good choices, right? So uh, if, if the last month was kind of just tracking what you were doing and you weren't really targeting macros or going after like a, a good pro high protein diet- I would be focused on that. I would say, hey, let's let's clean up the diet. Let's make good choices. Let's make sure we hit your protein intake, but let's keep your calories at eighteen hundred to two thousand. Let's get strong, and then I'd actually I actually would schedule walking for at least an hour a day for you, because it sounds like you you are in the same kind of boat that I'm currently in right now, where I started tracking my steps and was blown away that. I'm only doing like three <laughs> 3,000 steps a day just because we're so sedentary here. I sit in a car for 45 minutes to an hour both ways to get to my work. Then I typically don't want to move around very much when I get home. And so I've, I've actually become very sedentary in the last couple of years. And so now I have to like proactively go for a nice extended walk in addition to my short little 10-minute walks that I like to do after eating. So I would actually increase some movement for you, not hard cardio, not getting on there and sweating your ass off, just moving. I'd want you to try and track our steps and get our step count up a little bit while keeping your calories at 1,800 to 2,000 and eating good balance. And then our focus would be, let's get strong. Let's get strong. Let's build some muscle and let's see how you feel. And I think that we could lean out slowly while building strength and hopefully your metabolism at the same time. Yeah, and I see, the goal. I see here that your, your weight is at 146 at 5'5". Five five. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. And you want to drop 15 pounds. Your body weight's actually not bad if you had good body composition. I wouldn't worry too much about the scale. I'd worry more about the muscle and body fat percentage when you get to that place. But Adam's advice is ideal because what's happening right now is you're cutting your calories. So 1,200 calories is very low. That's the lowest I would ever want to take anybody. And I would only take them down for to a short period of time. Very short period of time. Yeah. And this is for somebody where like, we're getting them shredded, not going from like, oh, I'm, I want to drop a little bit of weight, but rather I got to get down to get on stage, right? I'm going to compete in a, in a competition where I'm getting to a, a borderline unhealthy body fat percentage. In other words, it's not a healthy place to be. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm on board with, with Adam right now and your body's kind of talking to you. And here's what you'll find with the higher calories and focusing on strength and increasing your activity, you're probably going to get leaner doing that. You're going to feel better and get leaner and feel stronger. You should not feel terrible going through this process. And I don't mean you shouldn't feel hungry because that's kind of normal if your calories are cutting or whatever, you're burning more than your, but the whole like, I'm feeling down, I'm feeling low energy, I'm dragging ass. And then you're asking yourself, am I being a baby? Um, you know, am I being weak? You know, I, I, you know, you know, the truth is, I don't think that's the case uh, with you. You hired a coach, you've been listening to us for a while. You're probably pretty consistent with work. You don't seem to be some, you know, you don't come across as somebody that seems to be lazy. So I think, uh, it's probably just too low for you. I, I would go in the op. I would do exactly what Adam said and take your time and see how you feel. Yeah. In a perfect world, I either keep your calories right at 1800 to 2000 and I slowly lean you out over that time, or we start to increase your calories and we speed the metabolism up. I'd be more, I'd be more happy as your coach 
if we didn't move anywhere on the scale and at the end of the month I had you eating, you know, 2,200 calories and we're kind of maintaining, then if you dropped five pounds and we're eating 1,200 to 1,300 calories. So that that would be my coaching to you. Is get, and, but, and I know that to, in defense of your coach, because I don't know what the conversation looked like. I know how hard it can be sometimes as a coach when my client is telling me like, I want to lose weight now. And so I don't know if you were that client where you're telling her like, well, were you yeah. doing that? Were you doing that? I mean, I, I have been because I've used the excuse of getting stronger and not worrying about my macros until this point, like for a few years, trying to build up muscle as I knew that it was declining and I was trying to take advantage of the opportunity. So now I'm at the point where I just couldn't accept that, like, you mean I have to count my macros down to like plus or minus five in a range every, t- every single day. So I think I've resisted being this strict and I wanted your opinion on like, is that what it really takes? No, I don't ever want to go on the stage, but I would like to be back to my normal size. It, it'll, it, it does take that initially. And let me tell you what happens when people do exactly what you said, which is super common, especially with my female clients that, that I would tell, okay, hey, we're going to go on this mini bulk or we're going to increase the calories. We're going to get stronger as they do exactly what you says. They do, they, they make the excuse of eating more but their choices of what they choose is not what their body needs. So what ends up happening is they're eating 2,200 calories, but then their protein intake is still, you know, dramatically lower than what they need for building muscle. So what ends up happening is they put, they put weight on, but they don't put good weight on. They end up putting five pounds on, but we didn't put five pounds of muscle on. We put four pounds of fat and one pound of muscle or no muscle and all body fat because the choices of calories that they consume were not ideal in relation to their strength training program. And so you tracking and tracking through a bulk, I think would be very valuable as just a pure learning lesson for yourself of like, oh, this is what it needs to look like. So if I want my body to respond in a way that I put on good weight, then I do need to be tracking the same way that I would track if I were cutting. Now, Joanna, let me ask you this, because you said you've been doing this for a few years where you were kind of trying to build strength. Uh, yeah. how, how much stronger are you now than you were three years ago? Or how different do you look? Is your body weight different? Like, what are the differences today versus three years ago? It's dramatic. I mean, by nature, I am an ectomorph. I have a tiny frame as far as my bone structure. So having extra weight is super uncomfortable for me. However. I mean, I have, I mean, I'm lifting couches with my husband and, you know, I don't, I want to be able to do things like haul my own luggage on business trips and not think a thing about it. Like I want that kind of functionality in my everyday life. And that's what I've been working towards. Do you know what your body fat percentage was when you started three years ago versus now? Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, you could ask me what my muscle mass was and I would tell you it was non-existent. Okay. But as far as like my, my general constitution, I definitely put on some fat in addition to that. Now I'm probably close to 25%, I would think. Okay. I mean, I think you, I think you know exactly what you did. You, you already said it to me. Like, I think you were eating in a surplus. You gave yourself that kind of green light of, you know, Hey, I need to put on some, some mass and I'm lifting weights and probably weren't making the best food choices. You're not very, mm-hmm. you're not very active because the job that you have. So you don't have the opportunity to burn a lot of those excess calories that are not ideal for us. And so you've put on some body fat along the ways. I literally think just by you tightening up the diet and making good choices, but staying fed, giving your body what it needs. So eating that 1800 to 2000 calorie range, but making good choices while lifting weights and then adding some walking in your day, like a nice hour walk, whether, whether you break that hour walk over small 20 minute walks or one long hour walk, I think those two things right now would, would really do your body good. Yeah. And you know, um, uh, your 25% body fat is not bad. Just going down. It's interesting with body fat percentage. So it's different numbers for men than for women, but women, when they go from like mid twenties to low twenties, so like a 4% drop, for example, in body fat percentage, it's quite visible because going from 25 to 21, it looks very different than going from 30 to 25. So 20, 25 to 21, you know, that's not a huge, that's only 4% drop. Your weight wouldn't change a ton. Um, or if you gain muscle at the same time, it might not change at all, but the way you would look and feel would change quite a bit. And 25% is a great body fat percentage to live at for a woman. It's, it's healthy. Hormones are pretty balanced. And, you know, typically women, when they want to look a particular way, the goal is usually to get down to like 20, you know, so, so you're looking at a four to 5% loss in body fat 
probably for what you're looking for, unless you want to get like really, really lean where you see striations and that kind of stuff. But you no, because then you look older. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah great true. comment. I want that. <laughs> yeah, great comment. But yeah, so I mean, you're 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 doing pretty damn good. I bet if you if you followed Adam's advice and stayed the course and hit like 130 grams of protein a day, with you know 1,800 to 2,000 calories, you're probably going to see yourself get leaner while you build a little bit of muscle. So your weight on the scale might change a little bit, but the way you look and feel will change a lot more. And this is going to take a long time, right? Like maybe a year. No, I don't think so at all. I think you're actually in a pretty healthy position. You're not far off where I, where I'd want you to be. A good goal would be in the next month or two to actually be in a place where we're not adding body fat and increasing your calories. Cause then in a perfect world, I've got you up to about 22 to 2,400 calories. And then I cut you back down to like say 1700 and you, then you lean out fast. So if I, if I can get you up to eating 2,400 calories, not putting on body fat, we've added some strength and muscle along the way over that course of that month or two of increasing there. And then I cut you down to 1,700. You're not only eating a good amount of calories that's good and balanced and healthy for you, you're also putting yourself at a deficit of seven, 800 calories a day. You should be, yeah. you'll lean out week over week for a month. And also, Joanne, I just did the math. If you dropped 4% body fat, um, that would be a six pound loss in body fat and a six pound gain in muscle. Not that it's not a huge number. So if you lost six pounds of body fat and gained six pounds of muscle, uh, in other words, your weight stayed the same, you would be 21% body fat. And remember, body fat takes up a lot more space on a pound for pound basis. So you'd probably lose close to one fourth of the size that you that you notice now. So you'd be smaller, same body weight, faster metabolism. So I think sometimes people look at weight on the scale. And they think, oh, I want to get down to a particular weight. But when it comes to body fat percentage, it's usually less than you think. Unless we're talking about, you know, uh, somebody who's in really, really high body fat percentages. Okay. I'm, I'm digesting it all. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> all right. You know, you know what would be a good program for you? Uh, do you have MAPS 15? No. I, MAPS 15 would be am amazing for you. Instead of doing two workouts a week, 15 minutes a day, I bet you would find yourself, it would be easier to be consistent. You'd have more energy. And as a result, you probably get better results. I'm gonna, I would, I'm gonna I would love you. for you to pair that with the walk I was talking about. Yeah, I, I'm going to send that to you, Joe. It's literally 15 to 20 minutes a day, every day, versus thank taking an hour twice a week. Well, thank you, guys. I mean, I certainly I didn't care about getting anything free as much as I just wanted your input. Like, I know this is supposed to be working. I have a friend in the program that's doing phenomenal. She's losing weight. And I'm like, I'm just either resistant or not. This isn't my way. Yeah. So, yeah, no, everybody's different. And yeah. it's it's really, really, it's it's pretty amazing how wide the individual variants can be. So be careful when you compare yourself to other people because um it's 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 it can be very different from person to person. But if you compare yourself to yourself, like you said, you're a lot stronger than you were three years ago. Um I mean that's I mean, huge. That's you're huge. doing great. We're not far off where we need to be. Not I at all. Follow what we talked about and then circle back to us. I'd love to hear where you're at in another month or two. Totally. Thank you all. all you right, got Johnny. it. Thanks, Joanna. Was she not the 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 average client? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was that's such, such like a conversation that I've had so many different times. No, hundred hundred percent. And I, you know, having a really sedentary job already, not a roaring metabolism. Um, this it's a this is a tough spot, and it's a tough spot too. I want to defend the coach that I don't know, right? Because I don't. Sometimes I feel like when we we come on here and we like shit on like the advice of the coaches. Yeah. I also know what it's like to be the coach and have a client who's just like I want results. I want results. I want to. I just need fifteen Probably pounds. Incessant about it. Yeah. Too. Right. And then you as a coach, you're like, well, you, okay. You yeah. want me just to show you? Like we could yeah. just cut some calories and mm -hmm. I can show you. But it's not what I want you to do. You know what I'm saying? And so then you're in this this predicament where they want it now and you want to show them that you have the ability that you can re re drop five pounds really quick on them. But you know what's best for them is to stay focused on building strength, getting those calories up, moving more, like, and then we cut down. So yeah, you know, a good rule of thumb is if your diet makes you feel like crap, it's probably wrong for you. So <laughs> cutting calories, yeah, you're not going to feel as strong. You might have some dips in energy, appetite, you know, goes up. That's normal. But if you're on a cut and you feel like crap and you don't want to work out and you're getting sick, um, it's not working for you. It's well, just not working another, for you. Another easy generic thing. I never wanted... I never wanted my female clients to have to go below 1,500. I never yes. wanted my male clients to have to go below 2,000. Yep, yep. 
So if you are in a cut and you have to be below either those one of those numbers as a male or a female. Now, obviously, there's a huge range on body. So I know there's people like, what? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, you know? That's a general. That's general. A, but that's, a good, that's right, pretty a, true. A very general generic number is that my, my women should not have to be below 1500 to lose weight. My men should not have to be below 2000 to lose weight. And if they do in order to lose weight, then I need to do a job, a better job of helping them build their metabolism through building muscle and speeding their metabolism up before I cut them because I want to be totally. able to cut them and keep them at those calories or higher because then they're in a more sustainable place long term. Our next caller is Matt from Utah. Matt, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, hey, what's up, guys? So the crux of my question is, um, you know, you've talked about like personalizing or modding maps programs. So the crux of it is like, at what point do you personalize and mod a program that it's no longer a maps program? Like you, you just <laughs> went counterproductive and you're just adding too much of your own stuff. And just it's some quick context. Like I, I ran maps anywhere, like as is, I did it the second time with all the suspension mods, but actually even in the foundational exercises, I just did only suspension, did all that stuff in there. I ran, actually, I ran Aesthetic because I got the Businessman Bundle. When I ran Aesthetic one time, I ran it once, like the home the home thing with dumbbells because I just, realistically, the where my job and life is, like I'm just not going to have access to barbells or to a gym. But So I ran the home edition with dumbbells. I ran it again using the suspension stuff, but like being hyper-focused to stay in the rep range. If I'm going above or below it, I'll either add like a weighted vest or make it harder or slow down time under tension, stuff like that. I'm in the third phase right now of MAPS power lift. And since there's not a home option, I just did dumbbells in place for that. I had to get creative on some of the lifts, but it's actually worked out really well. Um, and even, you know, going into like modding a program, I think it was in like the strength phase. There was one, I, I overdid it. I started adding some chin-ups, you know, to my routine. And I actually did a week of basically following the, the power lift program, but just with the bands, you know, similar to like trigger sessions and stuff. But so that's the main thing is, you know, at what point have I just changed it up too much, too much that it's no longer a MAPS program? And the main reason I'm asking that is I got my year planned out. I basically go from aesthetic to performance to power lift. And then I was going to jump into strong. Um, I'm going for like programs that are as different from each other as humanly possible. Um, but I've also been thinking, I, I don't know, I, I don't know if there's a home edition for strong that would make sense or if I'm just going to need certain equipment. I've also been debating doing symmetry, but that, and I know those are different programs, but the reason on symmetry is because like I started having some shoulder stuff, kind of feeling a little bit off, but Really, I, th I felt like I was in pretty good shape between Prime and Prime Pro. I'm like, I felt like I was, I, I got that sorted out. But I'm also like, symmetry is like, if I'm using dumbbells and suspension stuff, I'm probably, I'm wondering if I'm already getting the benefits that I would get from running symmetry. So that's the, that's the main question, you know. At what point have I just changed up the program that it's no longer recognizable? I, I love it. I love this question, Matt. I think that, uh, well, first of all, let's address the the programs that I think you should get or that we'll send to you, totally. right? So I think uh, have Doug send you Symmetry, and then I do we do have an at home stuff that you can do with Strong, so you can do that as a potential follow up. Um, but I think Symmetry will benefit you. I also think that you literally already knew the answer because you the way you've modded Maps programs are completely fine. The only time you made the mistake was when you started to add to the program. And that's. <laughs> I, so as long as you, and, and the guys will chime in, uh, the, my, my opinion on this is that when you follow a MAPS program, we encourage people after they've ran it to go ahead and mod it. Now, modding it though, but still following some of the fundamental principles, like how the, the, the exercise selection, how much training volume is it? So if, if someone goes, oh, well, I'll mod it myself. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to add four exercises to every day. Not a good idea because then, then you're probably going to go back the opposite direction. But taking an exercise, let's say out of there, like let's say squats are you know a tr traditional exercise, but you're like, you know what? I really want to get better at my Bulgarian squats. So I'm going to pull squats all out and I'm going to put Bulgarian split stance squats in all the places that squats are. That's totally fine. And it still is a MAPS program just because you've got rid of an exercise and you've replaced it. So d replacing ex or how you did uh, anywhere and then you went all like suspension trainer and you went you went that direction instead of uh, of doing body weight stuff like all that stuff, I think, is a great way to modify it to your life and have fun with the program when you start adding to it. 
and doing more than what's programmed in there, that's where you get in trouble, in my opinion. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head, Adam. Yeah. You know, there's a kind of a hierarchy of importance in in workout programming. And the most important things are total volume, frequency, and intensity. Okay, next up would be exercises, um, you know, exercise selection, and then it goes down from there. So you can switch up exercises and replace some that are similar, and you'll probably be okay. It's when you mess with volume, frequency, and intensity that things get messed up. So someone may say, well, I know this program says don't go to failure, but I'm going to modify it and go to failure in every set. The whole program you could throw out the window, right? Yeah. Or I know this says I'm doing 12 sets, but I'm going to do 17 sets instead. You throw the whole program out the window, right? So those are the most important things. But the idea behind modifying programs is to really learn and understand your body. And, and my advice is to make small changes and then stick with those small changes see how you feel, see how everything's responding, and then make another small change. Because if you make a lot of changes, all look, it's like anything else. Like It's, a, it's like if I'm doing a, a computer program and I change 10 things at once and then something doesn't work, well, which one of those things is it that threw the program off? I don't know, right? Mm -hmm. But if I make one change, now I can identify how that one change is affecting me and if it's good or bad, and then I can add to that. So if you do make changes and modify, do them small changes, Try to keep them basic and simple. See how you feel, and then go from there. Don't try to change, you know, make too many changes at once. I'm actually curious how you were able to modify <laughs> powerlift, uh, just being like Ooh, limited with one. weights. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, did you well, just add pause um, reps in there? Yeah. Did you increase you know, your time under tension? Well, it's funny. So my my background this is back in the '90s. I, I did powerlifting like as as a kid, in, you know, in high school and stuff. Um, I, like so, so I was somewhat familiar with it. But um, you know, the last, I spent the last twenty years kind of like working out too hard, hurting myself, getting lazy, then getting motivated. So this is why I've loved these programs, just because it's like it's the not taking it to failure was the hardest thing to get yeah. out of my head, mm -hmm. and so. On the powerlifting, I mean, I have these like yes for all, whatever, some dumbbells on that I got on like I got on Amazon or something. They go up to a hundred pounds each, um, so like that was pretty good. It's just a matter of keeping it like it at your chest. That was the big thing. I tell you, the, the hardest one to mod was when they put like uh, leg press yeah. mm -hmm. uh, in the first phase. With that one, I, I used the suspension trainer because I can do a pistol squat, but I just kind of used it as a little bit of, but the rep range was like 20. So I would do like 20 on each leg because I figured a oh. pistol squat was kind of the most equivalent to a yeah, leg okay. press, which I'm not a huge fan of a leg press anyways. But um, uh, yeah, so, so that's what I kind of did, you know, on that one. Um, but yeah, surprisingly, I mean, power lift just, I mean, and I think the part that kind of hurt my shoulder was... Dude, like to kind of make it because the volume wasn't enough for just like 200 pound dumbbells. I mean, for squats and deadlift, it just got hard. Yeah. Um, I think the problem that I was having because like I'm, you're literally holding all that weight on your arms, like mm -hmm. suitcases, and it's just I think that was just hurt. I, I mean, the problem was I wasn't engaging my shoulders enough. Mm -hmm. I was kind of loosey goosey, just kind of holding it. Um, the logic being, as long as I could grip it, like I didn't want to use grips or like what bands or anything like that yeah so but anyways i think that kind of was extra volume on my shoulders than i was anticipating so when i started sure. adding pull-ups then it just kind of screwed me up but it's doable but um it's kind of you had to get creative yeah yeah i mean literally small changes see how you feel and go from there you change a bunch of things at once it's gonna be hard to know what's working and when it, what's not working and, and adam hit the nail on the head the biggest mistake people make when they modify <laughs> yeah, is they add volume and that's just... Yeah, thinking more is better. Yeah, that's the biggest mistake. For future uh, replacements of leg presses, uh, sissy squats is what I would do. Oh, dude. Sissy squats. Oh, yeah. I th yeah. The sissy squats and aesthetic. That... I, oh, ups. dude. Th those, those blew me up. Those yeah. are so... I, I would have never imagined that they were that hard. Yeah, yeah. it's a great exercise. Yep. Good deal. Are we? What are we sending him, Adam? Did you uh, uh, offer some sym symmetry? symmetry yeah, right? symmetry is what Doug's going to send you. And then if you were to look into any other one, it would be strong. That would be the other one. But a symmetry, yeah. we're going to send it your way. Do you think symmetry, how sim how similar is symmetry to aesthetic? That was one thing. Nothing, I'm not sure. nothing oh, like yes. it. Very nothing, oh, really? Okay. Nothing yes. like it. It's in fact, when you, I, I like, I, by the way, I didn't comment on that. I love the idea of what, how you chose your programs. Because I know we have kind of a traditional, like how we order yeah. it for most people, but you've been the lifting RGB. for a while. Yeah. You've been lifting for a while. You're, you're advanced. And then to choose programs that are so unique and different from each other, I think to get the best novel stimulus from it is a great strategy. And so, 
I think symmetry and strong are definitely yes. two that will complement your uh, uh, like array of programs you chose already. So Doug will send you symmetry. Check that out. Yeah. And then uh, and then if you were to look at anything else, then strong would be a great addition. Totally. Awesome. This has been a lot of fun, guys. All right, Matt. Thanks for calling, man. Thank you, dude. See ya. It's funny. If you, if you look, because there's a lot of studies now these days on exercise and workouts and what works best. And if you look at the data, the – the best data, in other words, the most consistent data on what works is around volume, frequency, and intensity. And then it goes down to like rep ranges. And then it goes down to exercises. In other words, if you get two programs where the volume, frequency, and intensity are very much similar or the same, you're going to get similar results. Right, even, even if exercises are different, even if, even if rep ranges are somewhat different. Not saying that there's no value in those, but my point with that is those are the the, in the those are the things you you probably want to modify the least when you're following our maps programs because those are the things that that's the skeleton right intensity right. volume frequency and then it's you know exercise selection and rep ranges and tempo you can mess with those a lot more which when by you, the way those are the things that when one of us looks at somebody else's programming can critique it really quick easy like right away yep. you like, like it's not I'm not gonna like critique someone like oh you put Bulgarian splits no concert. that's yeah exactly <laughs> it was yeah. like that doesn't matter like no. it's, but what we'll look at right away is the frequency and the it, volume yeah. right and then how they phase the program right or totally. periodize it and so that right away can tell you like oh this person yeah. knows how to program totally mm -hmm. hey look if you like Mind Pump head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides we have free guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal you can also find all of us on social media so Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam, and you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pumps Out. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press, and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps, and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets, at the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out and less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.